Well, um, what is it for you? Good evening. Good evening to all of you from my good morning. And before I go any further, could I just ask whether you can hear me properly? Yes, okay, fine. But just let me know if I break up because you were breaking up a bit. So I don't want to talk if you can't hear me, okay? So let me start off by uh, bringing another voice into this gathering, and that is the voice of the wild chimpanzee, the distance greeting. <laughs> Just means this is me, this is Jane in chimpanzee language. So it would be lovely if I could be with you on this exciting day, launching these amazing resource boxes. But as you just heard from James, I'm grounded as I call it here in the UK. And at first I was really frustrated and angry, but then I thought, well, that's no use. So with my little JGI team, we created a virtual Jane. And indeed, Virtual Jane has been many times more busy than ever when I was touring. I didn't think I could be busier, traveling 300 days a year, lecturing, meeting people, and so on. But boy, was I wrong. And it's day after day, just looking at a screen, having to try and find a way of putting enthusiasm across, looking at a little green dot instead of in an auditorium filled with people. Now today, I see the people in the auditorium, but normally I, it, it's just me and nothing. And it's difficult to replicate the feel. Well, I don't get any feedback. When you're in an auditorium of 5,000 people or more, you get a lot of feedback, clapping and laughing. Fortunately for me, not booing, but um, that would be feedback, I guess. Anyhow. That's what I've had to do. And it's, people say, have a nice weekend. And I say, my weeks don't end. It's always not a weekend somewhere in the world. So anyhow, that's been my life since the beginning of the pandemic. And the only time I've been outside the house, well, I can walk with the dog around the cliff tops here. We're quite near the sea and that's okay but otherwise I've stayed at home. And the only time I actually uh, went out in a car was to go to the warehouse where Stuart McPherson, whose idea these boxes originally were, is packing up 20,000 boxes supported by the Hanson Charitable Trust for 20,000 primary schools across the UK. It was the most amazing site. It's sort of open air warehouse, obviously with a roof. And these boxes piled up. It was absolutely incredible. So I know that James has thanked everybody in Australia who's made these boxes uh, possible. But um, I, I just saw it all happening here and I'm very, very impressed. And I'm impressed with the content of the boxes. So I'll come back to those later. But meanwhile, let me return for a second to the pandemic. This pandemic that has caused so much suffering, death, loss of life, loss of loved ones, loss of jobs, economic chaos, affecting people all around the world. And the sad thing is that we brought it on ourselves. We brought it on ourselves by our absolute disrespect of animals, and our disrespect of nature. So how did this happen? Well, we destroy habitats. Sometimes this forces animals into closer contact with people. We move into their habitats, building roads and dams and the mining and logging, new developments. We hunt them, kill them and eat them. We traffic them. We sell animals, wild animals or their parts to the wildlife markets in Asia to be sold for food or medicine or pets. And we sell them in the bushmeat markets of Africa and also this pet trade in exotic animals is growing fast. 
animals, wild animals taken into people's homes where they don't belong. We have factory farms where billions of domestic animals are crowded into tiny, usually unhygienic uh, conditions. And in all of these situations that I've mentioned, we are creating a perfect environment for a bacteria or a virus to cross over from an animal to a person. And when that happens, sometimes a new disease is created as that bacteria or virus bonds with a human cell. And in this case, COVID-19 was created probably in a wet market, in a, a wildlife market in China. And unfortunately for us, it was very contagious and raced around the world. Well, vaccines are now being tested. We shall emerge from this nightmare. But an underlying nightmare that is a far greater threat to our future, to the future of all life on this planet, is the climate crisis. And there again, we've created it. We've created it by our absolute disrespect of the natural world. And I think all of you know what we're doing to our planet. We, the most intellectual species, the biggest difference between us and chimps is the explosive development of our intellect. So how absurd that this intellectual creature is destroying its only home. And how crazy to think that we can have unlimited economic development on a planet with finite natural resources. In some places, these resources are being used up faster than mother nature can replenish them. And not only that, but on this planet, populations of humans and their livestock are on the uprise. There's said to be about 7.8 billion of us on the planet today, estimated nearly 10 billion in 2050. So if we carry on with business as usual, what's going to happen? Well, unfortunately, we have leaders of industry and leaders of of uh, governments in some countries who are desperate to get back to business as usual. Don't seem to care about future generations. Don't seem to care about young people and what their future will be like. And this is very discouraging indeed. It's really important as we, as we move ahead beyond the pandemic that we get together to create a new, more sustainable, harmonious relationship with the natural world and with animals, respecting their right to be here. And you know, we now know that animals have feelings, they have intellects capable of solving problems, they have personalities. So all the animals I've just mentioned in the wildlife markets, the bushmeat markets, the factory farms, carted around the world as pets, they are individuals. They're individuals like your dog, your cat, your rabbit. And they have feelings like us. They can feel fear and they know pain. So we also need together to create a more sustainable and kinder and greener economy. And none of these things will happen unless somehow we get together and alleviate poverty. Because if you're really poor, you're going to destroy the last trees in your desperate effort to grow more food. You're going to cut down the trees or fish the last fish or eat the cheapest junk food. You can't afford to ask, did this harm the environment in its production? And we also need to think about our lifestyle. Are we living in a harmonious way with nature? Or do we have far more stuff than we need? Are we wasting? Are we being kind to animals and respectful of each other? And of course, this is what Roots and Shoots is all about. So these are the things that we somehow have to do to make a better future for all of you young people. And do I have hope? Yes, I do have hope. I find that all around the world there's a growing awareness of the problems 
and particularly among young people, there is a growing determination to do something about it, like roots and shoots, choosing projects to make the world better for people, for animals, for the environment. And that's why these resource boxes are so wonderful, because it's helping to get young people in touch with nature, out into the natural world, digging around in the earth, getting dirty fingers, poking about in the water, seeing what's living there. If you don't understand something, you can't learn to love it. And if you don't love it, you won't want to save it. So I really, really appreciate these wonderful boxes. So as I say, my main reason for hope is youth. And when I was traveling around the world, everywhere I went, I met young people who, who looked at me with shining eyes, eager to tell me what they've been doing, what they're doing, what they plan to do to make this a better world for people, for animals, for the environment. Because these things are all interrelated. You know, I learned that in the rainforest when I was out there with the chimpanzees, how every little species has a role to play. And it may seem not to matter if one small species becomes extinct, but guess what? That little species might have been the main food source of another species, then that may go extinct and so on and so on until a, an entire ecosystem can be destroyed. And I think all of you know exactly what we mean by the climate crisis, the changing weather patterns around the world. And I've seen them. I've stood in Greenland and watched the ice melting. I've met people who had to leave their island homes or their homes by the sea because at high tide, they were no longer hab habitable because of rising sea levels. And I've seen the devastating results of the floods and the droughts, and of course the terrible wildfires. My goodness, in Australia, you know about those wildfires and the horrible damage that they cause. And even now, the last of the great fires in California and Oregon are still burning. And as I've said, it's our fault. We brought all this upon ourselves, but it's not too late. So with the young people, all wanting to do something about it. Then there's the amazing resilience of nature, a place that we've destroyed or that has been destroyed, give it a chance and nature will come back. And I know in Australia that you're planting trees and think how wonderful it was after the fires, the number of people who volunteered to go and rescue the animals that have been harmed and take them in and care for them. And with the trees being planted and hopefully some rains, then once again, the forest can come back and the animals who've been saved can be reintroduced into the wild. You have wonderful stories in Australia of animals that were on the very brink of extinction and have been given another chance. And that's happening all over the world. All over the world, there are projects to plant trees. And planting trees, first of all, it provides shelter and home for animals. But secondly, as we lose forest, we, we uh, cause more carbon dioxide emissions to go up into the atmosphere. And carbon dioxide is the main one of these so-called greenhouse gases, the gases that circle the globe, trap the heat of the sun and cause this changing climate. And so planting trees is something really important. Planting trees is something Roots and Shoots and JGI and other organizations are doing all over the world. Last year, 2019, Roots and Shoots in total planted 5 million at least, possibly more trees. And as people emerge from lockdown, from the pandemic, more groups are getting together to go out and plant trees as a contribution towards saving the planet for the future. And then there's this extraordinary intellect, which I mentioned before. And 
it's amazing how science is coming up with new technologies that will help us to live in greater harmony with nature. There's solar and there's wind power and there's the tides and all kinds of other innovations. Some of them suck carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. It's quite exciting to know what's going on behind the scenes. The same kind of brain that's creating a vaccine now being tested in many countries, including the UK. And we can also use our brains, each one of us, to think about our own impact on the planet. Because every day we live, we make some kind of impact on the planet. And we get to choose what sort of impact we make. Unless, as I say, we're living in real poverty, in which case, we don't have the luxury of making those choices. We just have to do anything we can to stay alive. But all of you, you can all think about the footstep you leave each day on the planet and try and leave a lighter and lighter footprint. Don't we have, most of us, more than we need? Don't we waste? We waste clothes, we waste food. It's quite shocking, the amount of waste. And again, this is something Roots and Shoots is tackling. And Roots and Shoots is changing attitudes of parents, of grandparents. And some of those parents or grandparents are CEOs of big corporations, or they're in high up places in government. And more than that, the young people who joined Roots and Shoots from high school in 1991, when we began, almost 30 years ago, they're now out in the big wide world and they've got important jobs, some of them, and they hang on to their roots and shoots values of wanting to make this a better world. Great reason for hope. And finally, there's what I call the indomitable human spirit, the people who tackle what seems impossible and won't give up and so often succeed. So you see, there's the hope but we don't have that much time. There's a window of time, but it is closing. And that's why, even though I can't travel the world and try to inspire people to make a difference, I'm creating this virtual Jane who's talking to you now and hoping to get the message out. In fact, I'm told, the other day I said, well, actually I'm reaching hundreds of thousands more people as a virtual Jane. And I was reprimanded by the uh, by by JGI in the US saying, Jay, no, that's not true. You're reaching several million more people in many more countries in the same time that you would have if you were traveling from country to country. So although it's not the same, and although I miss contact with people, with my friends, I remember James sitting with you and the rest of the JGI Roots and Shoots team um, in Chris's house, I think it was, and what fun we had. And now it has to be virtual, but virtual is better than nothing. And just think, but for this intellect, I wouldn't be able to talk to you at all because all of this amazing technology wouldn't exist. <laughs> when I grew up, television hadn't been invented. No cell phones, no social media, nothing like that. So in some ways, we are moving towards a much better world. But we mustn't forget we're part of the natural world. We depend on the natural world for everything. We're not separate from it, just as we're not separate from the other amazing animals who inhabit this planet. So we need to get together. We need to work with the natural world. We need to help to heal it. We need to understand and respect animals, just as we need to understand and respect other cultures around the planet so that we can have a world of peace, a better world for us to leave to our children, grandchildren and theirs. So thank you very much on this exciting day of launching these amazing resource boxes and I hope that people will get a great deal of, of value from them. And um, so at this point, I will say thank you for listening and goodbye.
Jane, can you hear me? Yes, I can. And before you go, would you do something for us? Yes. Can we do well, it, it depends. together? We it depends. Can, together we will. Sorry, what do you want me to do? Say again. Can we do together we can, together we will? Oh, yes, yes. Well, let me explain that in Tanzania, where Roots and Shoots began, I found that at the end of a gathering where we brought different groups together to share experiences and inspire each other, they were saying, together we can, meaning together we can save the world. And I said, yes, we can. Of course we can, but will we? And so now, at the end of such gatherings, they all say, together we can, together we will. So let's all do that together if we care about the planet. Okay? So one, two, three, together we can. Together we, together will. we will. Let's try once more. That wasn't, that wasn't, uh, it didn't sound. Oh, again, again, again. So, okay. Together we can. Together, Together we, we can. Thank you, Jane. Oh. <laughs> I think the camera's up there. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, thank you, um, everyone. And obviously, what a great thrill to hear from, from Jane. Um, that's more or less it for this evening. Uh, but before we wrap up, I'm going to ask Grace to uh, play us out one more time um, uh, before we go. But I just, while she's setting up, I just really want to thank everyone for coming. Um, obviously, at this time with COVID, it's so challenging. It's a bit of an excitement to get out. <laughs> and a novelty um, for everyone that's joined us on Zoom. Uh, thank you so much. Um, if you want to uh, get in touch with us, uh, learn more about the resource box, uh, please just check out our website. Um, but uh, if nothing else, Grace, take <laughs> us out.